Hello, my name is Amanda Leck and I'm the Executive Director of the Australian Institute for Disaster Resilience. I wish to start by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all join us from today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this event. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of Australia. Ada develops and shares new knowledge to support the disaster resilience of Australian communities. Here in Australia, we understand the complex and devastating impacts of disasters. In the past two years, we have lived through catastrophic bushfires, the COVID-19 pandemic and unprecedented flooding. We have also witnessed compounding disasters and extreme weather events in all corners of the globe. In this context, Ada produced Australia's first handbook on systemic disaster risk. This handbook is leading thinking and supports Australia's implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. It works from the premise that we are in a new era of disaster risk management, that climate change is driving creation of new hazards and disaster risks, and the age of taking a hazard by hazard risk assessment approach is over. In these circumstances, we must encourage, support and resource experimenting with new ideas and concepts to reduce disaster risk. One approach is to shift our mindset to view risk across the systems that make up our societies. We refer to this as systems thinking or viewing risk through a systems lens. By doing so, we better understand the dynamic moving parts that make up a system as well as the people and places affected by our decisions. We know that leaders play an important role in the context of systemic disaster risk. Leaders can influence whether risks are created, reduced or outsourced. And forward-thinking leaders will engage with a rapidly changing risk context. They'll understand how and where systemic risks emerge, who will be impacted by the decisions they make and aim to minimise loss and harm. If you are a leader and want to influence the shift to systemic disaster risk reduction, then the principles and guidance in this handbook are for you. While the handbook is a core component of Australia's disaster risk guidance, the principles can be adopted internationally. For example, thinking globally while acting locally is a must in a growing interconnected world that is confronted with compounding and challenging disasters. Alignment and cohesion of efforts is at the core. Acting locally is best exercised by well-informed and inclusive communities. Community expertise, engagement and trust is critical to reducing disaster risks and building resilience. The first principle in the handbook is to embrace uncertainty. COVID has taught us that the changing risk context involves greater uncertainty and that there are many different perspectives to be negotiated. Inclusive approaches to governance and systems thinking can help chart the way forward. For example, think about the potential impacts that arise from exposure of vulnerable people, communities, infrastructure like energy or waste, assets, natural environments and socio-economic activities and services, and how these systems are all interconnected. There is always a level of complexity or uncertainty. So don't be overwhelmed or wait for certainty before taking action. The next key principle for you to consider is place-based systemic resilience and sustainable outcomes. Treat resilience as capacity building and take a community level place-based approach to understand the points where risk is realised, the things of value that are affected and who bears the costs. Use systems thinking to get an understanding of the dynamic, complex moving parts that make up a resilient society. Put simply, 
systems thinking embraces the complexity of the world by looking at it in terms of wholes and relationships, rather than by splitting it down into its parts. Look for the points of intersection and weigh up if it is values, rules or knowledge that enable or constrain progress and act accordingly. Another critical principle is to establish long-term sustainability goals. Plan to avoid systemic failure and invest in mitigation when setting long-term sustainability goals. Inclusive governance and investment is key to not only long-term sustainability, but short-term incremental interventions. Consider policy, domains, climate change and systemic disaster resilience as interconnected. We need to reposition current and emerging leadership. New leadership qualities are needed to meet the challenges of the future. Disasters have shown leadership can emerge unexpectedly in traditional and non-traditional settings, motivated by passion, hope and a sense of agency. Be equipped with trusted contemporary knowledge and be prepared to engage and educate others about systemic risk and vulnerability. Help others upskill and be involved in the system. Leaders should make significant effort to fit governance to the characteristics of the decision context. Structures, rules and arrangements influence whose views and priorities are considered. As the magnitude of change becomes increasingly uncertain, it is important that diverse and broad representation of values and knowledge are incorporated in decisions that are made. For example, are all voices included in the development of your strategies and plans? Have you included those who are more vulnerable to disasters, such as people with disability, women and Indigenous peoples? Fostering systemic risk cultures and networks is a powerful enabling force for change. Change is happening too quickly for slow moving strategies to be effective and more frequent considerations of risk are necessary. The COVID-19 pandemic showed us that when leaders were confronted with the dilemma of making choices and balancing trade-offs in a rapidly evolving crisis that threatened lives and livelihoods, economies ground to a halt. Investing in cultures that are risk-based, flexible, authoritative and well-resourced will lead to systemic disaster risk being anticipated and major shocks avoided. Treat inclusive, networked risk cultures as an enabler of opportunity and invest in developing cultures attuned to the changed systemic risk context. Provide access to and be transparent about decisions when you make decisions about systemic disaster risk reduction, you are making decisions about people's lives and livelihoods. Ensure that people have adequate access to the decision-making process and that the reasons for decisions are clearly communicated. Move from transactional or competitive relationships and invest in collaboration for collective impact. Treat decision-making as an active learning process. Change the nature of decision-making including the processes used. Regard decision-making as a trial, experiment or interim measure, actively learning from doing. Act early, regularly assess and adapt continuously. Recognise values, vulnerability and social justice. Our values and beliefs are not static or universally shared. This may be even more so in a rapidly changing disaster risk context. For this reason, our purpose and objectives need to flex and change as our values change. Be transparent about why particular decisions were chosen over others and work with stakeholders to agree on the goals and objectives for reducing disaster risk. And take a systems approach. Use a systems approach to illuminate complex interconnections and relationships. With this understanding, it is possible to select the best intervention points for action. Forward thinking leaders and decision makers in Australia are leading the way towards systemic disaster risk thinking and action. In this video, we share with you some of their insights. The thing about climate change is that we all know 
that there is a body of science that's telling us this is all going to get worse and it's going to exaggerate the problems that we've got today. One of the things I think the skill set of a good planner is that we're able to crystallise a plethora of information and land it at a decision. When we understand cascading or clustered risks between different sectors, between people and businesses and governments, then we can make much better decisions about what matters. We have more data than ever before. We've got amazing tools such as artificial intelligence that helps us interpret that data with greater insights, we can make better decisions. Risk assessment and management is not like a, cooking a chocolate cake or something where you just you know, read a set of instructions, throw in the ingredients, put it in the oven and out comes a risk assessment. It's a lot more involved um, and ambiguous than that. The role of leadership is to ensure that we capture the energy that comes out of that in our community to get them to shift their thinking to a better place.